Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a DIY Dollar Tree super easy project using cotton stems. We're going to do three, not four. I'll tell you about that later. What we're going to use is cotton stems from the Dollar Tree. I picked up 10 when I saw them. Don't worry, I left some for other people. We're also going to use some other florals like eucalyptus and um, whatever autumn flowers that you like in neutral tones. I like neutral tones. We're going to use this small willow wreath for one of the projects. We're going to use some burlap ribbon. This just happens to be burlap from Walmart that I was gifted and also this I'm telling you run to Hobby Lobby right now and get this with a coupon six dollars for 75 feet of oh it's, it's amazing okay we're also going to use two of the tall metal buckets from the Dollar Tree for a third project so the first one we're going to do is so easy I almost hate that I'm doing a video I am um, so what I'm doing is I'm taking the small wreath and two stems of cotton that I have cut the extra stem off the bottom. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, if you want to keep yours long. You can just twist the end of the stem around. It is the perfect color brown with these willow wreaths as well. So what I'm doing is I've tucked the end under the wreath and then gone to the space between the second and third cotton stem is pretty wide. I've separated the two cottons one in one direction, one in the other. And I've used that piece of wire to wrap it around the willow wreath. And then I just kept playing with them until I got them where I wanted them to be. What I really did like about these cotton stems from the Dollar Tree is that they do have a variegated size on each stem. So basically there's small, medium, large, medium, small, like that. So you can go ahead and mix it up. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take two of these eucalyptus stems that are cut off of the eucalyptus from the Dollar Tree. The eucalyptus from the Dollar Tree has solid eucalyptus, sort of like silky leaves. And this is the sort of green brown color that they have. It does come in different colors. Anyway, that has sort of that silky leaves, but it also has skeleton leaves. And I did like the combination, but I like the combination on one stem. So here's what I did. I removed all but the top leaves and the little plastic tip. Um, and what I did was I laid them out as they came off. And then I went ahead and I switched them up. So um, the stem that started with the silk one, I added the skeleton leaf next, and then a silk one next, and then a skeleton leaf next, and then a silk one, and continued on until I had replaced all of the leaves on back onto the two stems. Basically, I just made both stems um, even. <laughs> they made them, they weren't exactly identical, but they were both a mixture of full leaves and skeleton leaves. I hope that makes sense. And the reason I wanted to do this is because I wanted to add these as an accent piece. Again, I wanted this not just to be cotton. It did look cute, just cotton. I could have just put a ribbon on it and hung it. But I wanted to do this with these, um, with this eucalyptus as well. Now the skeleton eucalyptus leaves, mine were kind of like folded, but I will tell you, they're plastic. So just the war and they're thin plastic. So just the warmth of my fingers was, I was able to just flatten them out and make them a beautiful new shape again. Okay. And now I've just done the same thing, but I've actually gone in like the same direction. I've tucked the tip under and then I've just taken it and weaved it through. What I actually wanted to show you there real quick was I took the actual tip off. There's like this little plastic, plastic tip of little leaves at the top and I stuck the wire in the wreath and then put the tip back on the other side. All of these projects that I'm doing today contain zero glue that's why there's no glue gun and other than my my stems and stuff were already cut um but other than cutting the ribbon and i think i cut some stems for the second project but that's also optional um, i didn't do any cutting either so this is just that's why i wanted this to be super easy and also i like the fact that they're not permanent they could be you could glue these obviously if you really want to gift them to somebody or want them for a permanent um, decor piece, you go ahead and glue it down if you want to or wire them on. But I wanted to be able to make it so I could use the stems again next year if I wanted in some different project. Okay. So now I'm using this ribbon from the Dollar Tree. It kind of came out where it's, it's cold burlap ribbon, but it sort of has like a boho like different two different shades of burlap like jute put together I don't know how to describe it exactly but I just picked any ribbon I wanted a narrower ribbon because this is the smaller wreath and I didn't want it to be like all ribbon 
but you guys do what feels right for you, what looks good with your aesthetic. Um, and again, this is the only thing that I did end up cutting. I did quite a bit of it. I didn't cut and glue a bow on. What I did was I just put a really long piece. I tied a knot at one end, how far I wanted it to hang off the door. And then I just tied that end into a bow. And I'm sorry, I hit the camera and it, you're kind of off camera, but I'm just tying a bow like you would tie your shoes overhand, like regular bow, you know, this rabbit ear, wrap it around that rabbit ear kind of thing. Um, <laughs> And there it is. I think it came out super cute and so simple and so inexpensive and easy. With the ribbon, probably a total of 4 or $5 for that cute little thing. Um, but we'll also have materials left over. Okay. So now for this one, I 100% apologize to the person that I saw do this. Now, here's what it is. You know YouTube's new system <laughs> where they'll show you a, a video of somebody like they'll play the video without sound um, so I started to watch this video and I clicked on it to watch it to see who it was and my whole system scrambled but it was a recommended video so there was no way I could find out who it was that did this but I saw it in a preview and I wanted to share it with you basically what we did was we flattened out the backs of two of these long buckets I did a April Fool's fail video in 2018 I was trying to make this bucket into this bucket by like hammering it and squishing it and I was going to run it over with my car and who knew it was so simple as just take your hands and flatten it out um, as you see with the first one it was much easier I laid it on the table and I put my hand inside the bucket and I flattened it out and once I got where I wanted my basically the corners to be I just took my hand and very carefully manipulated the corners to be a little squarer a little a little sharper and then I repeated the same with the other one using the first one as a guide to make how long I wanted the back to be and now I'm taking a, a screwdriver and a hammer and this is optional you could glue a handle on here you could glue jute on here you could do whatever you want to hang it but I really wanted that authentic it's really like a maple, it's really supposed to be like a maple syrup bucket, um, but I really wanted that hung bucket feel. So I've taken right on the seam, I took a Phillips head and flathead screwdriver just to make the hole bigger, and my hammer, and of course a piece of wood so that you don't mar up your working surface. You know, I always keep this scrap by me. And I just basically hammer the screwdriver through there and do it in a couple of places so your hole is big enough and then you can hang it on a nail or something. I went ahead and I put cotton stems, the delphinium, a hydrangea, as well as some eucalyptus and then this thing called fall filler I just got. Um, and that's what I just added them to the buckets. No permanent, no styrofoam. I just threw them in there and uh, did matching ones for both sides of my fireplace. So now for this one, I'm going to show you two really quick. We're going to make a swag. We've never made a swag here on our channel, but boy, if I've been making swags since I could swagger. No, that's not right. Um, since, um, since I could, I don't even know what I'm saying. So what I want to show you here is how I wanted to, I wanted to show you how to do it if you wanted just cotton. So using five cotton stems, uh, what I've done is I've taken two and I've lowered the one, um, one, basically I lowered one, basically I lowered the right one on the right side and the left one on the left side, down one cotton. And all I did was I took the buds and I overlapped them. So I put the cotton on the right and put it over the left stem and vice versa. And what this did is sort of created a zipper effect that connected them without any glue or any wire. And I repeated that with the left side, but obviously the left one was lower. And then when it came to attaching them to the middle, I basically did just about the same thing. I put the middle one down higher still. Um, so the, it basically looks like stair steps on both sides. And I just took the, metal, the middle uh, cottons and every once in a while I stuck one between two other ones. And then you can take the ends and you can tie your bow or your jute string or whatever you want to the end to create just a cotton only swag, okay? And here's kind of what it looks like as a cotton only swag. I just will show you here in a second when I get it all fluffed up. And remember, these move left and right. You know, you can, they're on wires, so you can adjust them to be as pretty or as, you know, as plain or as simple and elaborate as you want. But we're going to make it fancier. <laughs> so, what I'm doing is I'm taking two eucalyptus bunches, three eucalyptus bunches um, from the Dollar Tree. 
I am not going to um, do the same thing I did with the eucalyptus last time because we're actually using three whole bunches which have the variety of silk and skeleton leaves. So I wasn't going to go ahead and mix them up on each branch. I just laid them all down. I put the one in the middle a little taller and the two on the sides. Again, I raised them up a little bit so that we'd have that dimension of a swag. Um, and then I took the cotton stems and I actually did the same sort of thing and I stepped them up. But the trick to me is I took a rubber band and I tripled it so it was nice and tight but not so tight. And I got it around the eucalyptus stems. Then, as I laid the cotton down, I tucked the cotton stem under the rubber band, and it kind of helps hold it in place while you're making your arrangement. And this is just an easy way, no glue required. You can adjust it if you want to. You can glue it eventually if you, if you feel you want to keep it permanent, but you can also just make this arrangement, adjust it accordingly, and go about your business. <laughs> so... With this eucalyptus, I did know that I wanted to cut these eucalyptus stems down eventually, but you could just fold them over. They're going to get hidden by the bow anyway, but um, you could go ahead and just um, cut, you know, fold them over if you don't want to cut them. Um, but I went ahead and I cut mine off with a wire cutter. Now for the bow. We're just going to make a six loop black and white bow on top of a four loop burlap bow. Um, and they're all going to be in one bow. So basically we took our burlap ribbon. Now this burlap is wire edged burlap from Walmart. It is much stiffer than the wire edge burlap from, Wal from Dollar Tree. And I actually would have preferred to use the wire edge burlap from Dollar Tree. But I'm really trying to use this up. Because I have a few rolls and it's, it's, just, it's just I have to finish it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> But I much would have preferred it because it does have a better flow to it. This is much stiffer. So what I did was I took the burlap ribbon and I folded it over. I like to start with my ribbon just past middle. I know that sounds weird. And I folded it over one whole time and then two whole times. And I ended it just past middle so that the middle overlaps. And then I cut notches. I folded it in half uh, from loop to loop. So I can find the center and then I cut it, not in half, but I cut it just a notch in on both sides at the midpoint. And then I repeated the same with the check ribbon, except I made three loops. Started just south of middle and ended just north of middle with three times going around. Folded it in half again to find center and then put a notch in both sides of center. Now what always differs from my bows is that a lot of people will just take jute or wire or pipe cleaners and they'll loop their bows together. But I like to take the ribbons that I'm going to use for the tails and I like to make them just a little bit longer and I like to use those to tie around to hold the bow together. Um, this way if the bow does open it does have that ribbon going around the middle. It's so easy. You don't have to use any extra materials. You just kind of, I don't want to say waste, but you use about an an inch or two, depending on the size of your bow, an inch or two more of the ribbon that you're already using. Um, but you don't have to have any extra materials to do this with, okay? And then as you got it tied really tight, and this is all wired ribbon, it's all going to just do whatever you want it to do. So I manipulated it so that the check ribbon was on top of the burlap ribbon. I opened all the loops. You basically spread out all the loops, and you want to make sure you spread them far apart. The reason we make the notches is that, so that the ribbon can actually come out of the loop and sit on top of the piece that was basically it was inside of a minute ago it's now can sit on top and it will stay there um so i spread the spread it <laughs> sure i did i spread the two burlap pieces in opposite directions did that on both sides and then i opened up all of the check ribbon um, and created all those beautiful loops then i went ahead and i dovetailed the ends of the ribbon now we've talked about this before I will say it again when you fold the ribbon in half and you make what looks like a dove's tail which is um, like an of the back of an arrow it's a perfect way to say it when you cut it just on an angle that is called a dog's ear because it simulates a dog's ear and this looks like a dove's tail I mean that's that's the reason they name these things these things right so I just wanted to I always like to teach you guys something and that's what your lesson will be for today <laughs> so now um the, um, you could go ahead and glue this bow on, but since I want to make this semi-permanent, I just take a piece of regular jute and I kind of stick it under the knot, which I could have done before I tied it off. It just, I've often find it more difficult to like try to tie it with 
trying to keep mindful of where the jute is and not get the jute caught up. For me, it's easier to just take the jute and feed it under the knot. Um, and then I tie it in a knot and then I tie it to the swag. I initially tied the swag with just a scrap piece of the ribbon. Um, but then I was like, ooh, that scrap piece of ribbon will look like an extra set of tails. So I went ahead and I dovetailed them as well. And that's it. So that's this project. I love this swag. I haven't made one in such a long time. It makes me so happy. So you guys, I hope you really enjoyed these projects. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to share with friends and family. Anybody you know might be interested in making any of these projects. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And as always, you take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time. Bye.